G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. Today is super laid back, super chatty. So if you're, uh, if you're not in for a chat, um, you might wanna go pick something else that's a little more fast paced. I've got five journals here. Two are only really worth flipping and that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, but I wanna show you these three as well. This is all my Muggle Art Study, which is now the Wizarding Artist Society um, journals. This is everything that I use to do those experiences. Um, it, it's a whole thing. I'm gonna link everything you need to know down below, which is probably just a, a website link to Art Journaling the Magic. Um, if you're not familiar with them, I, I talk about them all the time. I just absolutely love uh, Art Journaling the Magic. Typically it's all about a, a Disney experience, but there is another uh, Wizarding World of Harry Potter experience. And uh, so that's where this kind of lives in that space. And there are these online hangouts that we go to where we just, um, I mean, it's kind of all changing. So uh, this is kind of why I'm flipping these two because these were a part of the Muggle Art Study uh, thing that has now changed to the Wizarding Artist Society, which is now changing to this. Um, so th this is the newest stuff. This is the stuff that um, I think we're moving on from, so <laughs> I can't be completely sure. <laughs> Things are changing all the time. We haven't had our first official Wizard Art Wizarding Artist Society meetup yet online, of course, um, but we'll be doing that this week. So I'm going to leave the information down below for you to check out more of that if you want. Um, I'm just a big fan of Art Journaling the Magic, and this is something that I do uh, not, not for, like, uh, kind of business reasons. Uh, I do teach with Art Journaling the Magic sometimes, but I do this as like a student. So I, I turn up just like everybody else. I do the lessons. I just enjoy myself. <laughs> I get carried away with wanting to purchase everything that we're talking about in the live streams. It's just a whole bunch of fun and, um, and it's a super great experience because I think one of the r most random things, I should put this on like a page for you to look at before. <laughs> We start anything. Uh, one of the most random things I never really thought about when I uh, started teaching art journaling and mixed media arts and crafts and uh, I guess everything that I kind of have my hand in at this moment, I didn't realize that places for you to show up and learn as a teacher were kind of few and far between because there becomes this weird conflict of interest where um, other people don't want you learning from them just on the off chance that they think you're going to go and teach it to somebody else. Now, we're not here for that conversation, but um, it's just one of those things that I, I feel like is worth mentioning because Art Journaling Magic has been such a great space for me to be in as someone who wants to continue learning and sharing in all of those good ideas as a student. Um, even though I do pop in to teach, uh, I, I'd like to keep that part very separate so people know when I'm there teaching and then people know when I'm there so that I have fun <laughs> um, because I, yeah, there's not many places that I feel like I can go and have fun uh, anymore. I have to really seek out those communities and make sure that they're safe spaces for, for me to be in as a teacher, which is, um, yeah, just something random I never thought about. But uh, here we are and I love it and I'm, I'm super into it and I'm obsessed. Uh, so typically all of the Art Journaling the Magic stuff is Disney and I've shown you the Disney Golden Books that I have. Uh, this is the Harry Potter version of all of that. So um, we started with composition notebooks. Tanji actually sent me these. If you ever hear me referring to Tanji, that is uh, who Art Journaling the Magic is, Tanji Baxter. Um, so please go follow and go uh, do all your research and, and visit the website and stuff. I'm sure I've sent you there before for the golden books, but just so you know, this is the same, this is the same uh, business. Uh, this is the composition notebook. They're both really different. This one has a bunch of different uh, like fold out and flaps and pages and stuff. So this one's super interesting to flip and I loved putting this together. Um, and this one is just... Uh, literally just like a, a book, but it's a comp composition notebook full of watercolor paper. So they're both watercolor paper. Um, they're just two different styles. I guess this is all the flaps and fold outs and this is just your regular standard, um, you know, page by page leaves. Leaves? Leaves. <laughs> I'm not sure how you say the plural of leaves when they're in a book. Um, I'm sure they're leaves or pages. So I don't know which one I should start with. Maybe this one, because it's a little more plain. Um, and not to mean that it's any less interesting, but it's just not as involved as the other one. This is the one I did for Muggle Art Study course number two. So there was one live experience and they're basically like three nights that we all get together um, and we, we hang out online in the, like a conference call and we all get to do lessons together. We get to chat about stuff and do show and tell and kind of work through projects together. So this was the second retreat. This one I actually attended uh, in real time. The other one I did kind of uh, just watching the replays because I didn't attend that one. Um, so this one was really fun because 
I mean, it's kind of surprising how much you can get done uh, within the time frame. Each one goes for about three hours, um, and it's three consecutive nights. So it's about nine hours of a course total, and you really don't even realize how much you're learning and how much you're actually getting done until you finish it. And you're like, whoa, like in the past few nights, I've done all of this. So I, I love it for that. Um, and of course, I love it because I love all the people. But this is uh, my front cover page. One of my favorite things about this journal is such a small detail, but the deckled edges that I painted with rose gold and copper. I thought they were really, really fun. So I love this. These blank pages. <laughs> I've still got some stuff to finish, you'll see. I mean, this, these are not finished at all. That's why I think it was gonna be rather quick flip. I just wanna tell you what we did and kind of uh, how much fun it is. And I did have some requests to flip these online so people could see them. So um, I'll probably put up a just a music only flip of these, these and the other one. So if you wanna watch that, I just leave me here because I'm just gonna keep chatting. I might even pull my chair over, actually. <laughs> I don't know why I'm standing. Just suddenly made this a whole exercise for myself. These were stamping, so a part of the course was stamp carving. I didn't have any stamp carving stuff, so I got, I have it here. I pulled apart some of my old foam stamps and I got a, an Amazon box and I just cut up the pieces of it. And what I did was, see this strip? This was a part of my old foam stamp. I cut it into a really like strip kind of like a worm, and I glued them on over a line drawing because I wanted these potion bottles, and that's how I made these kind of um, really rough looking stamps. So it's really great. All you have to do is cut out a really like thin little noodle from your foam, and then just glue it. And they don't match up. Mine are all really, really wonky, but it really adds to that effect. So this is, I mean, probably the cheapest stamp you'll ever come across, and I absolutely love it. The bonus is you can uh, make anything you want, but you can also kind of abuse it with acrylic paint, which is what I was using. I also took the shape of what was inside the bottle and I made kind of like a mask or a negative or a fill. I don't know how you would say it, but these are the shapes in the middle. So what I would do, and these are just cardboard as well, I would put bunches of different colored acrylic on and then I would stamp it out onto the page. They've even got their little cork toppers. Um, I would stamp these out onto the page so they get all this like modeled kind of super interesting look. I washed over it with uh, metallic watercolor as well. Um, and then I, I kind of screen printed the line work on top. So that was super fun. I have to say, I'm, I'm happy I didn't have the stamp carving stuff. Not that I didn't want to do it because it looked like a lot of fun. I just, um, I was really terrible. and I didn't read that we were gonna do that beforehand. Um, but being resourceful in a way kind of is just as fun to try and figure out as well. A little stressful if you're a newbie. I would never suggest to just not read the supplies list, but uh, I do like to fly blind sometimes. I did have these pencils though, and we carved little stamps into the bottom of these. Um, I love this star one, I actually use it everywhere now, but the other one that I really love, someone had said it in the chat, I can't remember who, this was totally not my idea, but the little feet from the Marauders map, I have them kind of um, stamped out, like they're walking through these little puddles of ink. It's really kind of hard to see, but I have those two pencils. This is now my Wizarding Artist Society um, makeshift stamp packet. <laughs> <laughs> I have a whole bunch of stuff going on in those uh, in my little tubs now because of all the Harry Potter stuff, which I love. So I'm going to get myself back into frame. There we go. All right, so that was the the stamping portion for me. Oh, I have this stamp too. I love that. This was uh, we did warm up lessons. So we had uh, creatures that we were painting beforehand, and I like to try and make each of my warm up lesson its own piece. And this was what I came up with. If you can see all the gorgeous. Uh, metallic and the color shifting and the iridescent watercolors. Those are from a bunch of different brands. Um, designs by Rachel Beth, Hydracolor on Etsy, and Cliffs of Watertown, I believe. I also had used some of that. Anyway, those are there. I'm not gonna get into like every supply I used because we'll just be here forever, but um, yeah, usually we talk about all that stuff in the meetups and in the, in the groups. There's no real like groups. It's hosted on a um, on Rizuku, which is kind of like how I have my Teachable. There's an online uh, course platform. Rizuku is just another one of those. So you can always go back and like watch the replays if you missed out on a live stream, or if you have like a question or something, you can put it in the chat. It's not like a chat, like an Instagram chat or something, but there's a like a, a thread of comments that you can post your questions in, and we'll share our work there as well. But 
like to share mine here too, just so you all get a look. I, I hate the idea that some people might love this and miss out. I know it always seems like a big marketing pitch, but um, honestly, like, I don't mind if you're there or not. I'm sure Tanji doesn't mind if you're there or not. Only be there if you want to be there. Um, but I just know that there are so many people that could just benefit from having community to do this along with. One of my biggest gripes with, um, I guess, my own job is that <laughs> I don't do it with anybody. I'm, I'm always alone and... Uh, you know, despite the fact that I maybe don't work well in teams all the time. <laughs> I do when I need to. Um, but I, I really like to be around people, and I, I think that's why Art Journaling the Magic has become such a big part of my art journaling experience, because A, it's the one place I can kind of always turn up to and be a student if I want to be, and then uh, B, it's it's people. It's people from everywhere. We, we physically get together when we go to uh, the Disney parks and meet each other and uh, you know, have our fun there, but then we also get to virtually be together and hang out in the live streams that Tanji hosts. And even through these past couple of months, Tanji has hosted a ton of free live streams. So if you haven't seen that, uh, go to the Instagram, Art Journaling the Magic, and click the link tree. There's a whole schedule, like a whole calendar of um, older replays that you could watch or new, like, scheduled upcoming ones. And a lot of them are free to attend as well in this time. Um, so... I would just encourage you to, to see that because I, I don't want you to miss out. I, I could have benefited from being a part of all of this for years longer than I have been. This hasn't actually been that long for me. <laughs> I'm just a crazy fangirl. Anyway, um, let's get back to the book. This is Brit's lesson, fabulous lesson on potions. Uh, please excuse that my watercolor went wild and ate through the spine. I like to think of it as one of my potions just kind of exploded, um, <laughs> but it, it's not finished and you'll see why. I, I go crazy in these with watercolour. I, I really don't mind. Art Journaling the Magic has kind of like freed me up to just splash watercolour everywhere and do whatever I want, uh, which makes me feel really good. But sometimes some of your pages become casualties. But if you can see all the shine and the shimmer and stuff in this, it's just stunning. I love it. I'm not tooting my own horn, I'm talking about the watercolour. <laughs> <laughs> Although I am kind of fascinated with how these look. I was practicing different styles of manipulating the watercolour and playing with the different um, kind of techniques. So this one I wanted to have these blurred edges to get this smoky effect. This one we were doing the splattering uh, with the, the straw. I keep this straw next to my desk, a metal straw, to blow onto and make the watercolour do fun things. This one I wanted to dimensionalise the smoke by having uh, some of this uh, crossing over, kind of shadowing. And this one was just all mixed and modelled and uh, really pretty, with lots of splatters. But yeah, I tried to make the different cauldrons look like different things. And these were the house colours, the Harry Potter house colours. So it's fitting that I only finished the Ravenclaw one. <laughs> I'm a Ravenclaw! Uh, but I like this little sninch one. I do want to finish the sninch. This is the toad lesson. So how I said uh, Inthia was doing these warm-ups with us, we did an owl, a toad, and did we do something else? I'm not quite sure if we did something else. Uh, yeah, we did the pygmy puff. Um, so we did the exp I did these toads in these little kind of cages, and I called them exploder toads, uh, and they're the glowing edition. And that was just mixing a bunch of different uh, techniques together. One of my pages, where did that go? This page. I was doing a bunch of... Uh, like little warm-up teaching kind of moments before I did my lesson um, so this was some of that work here uh, but I was putting all of those lessons into one little thing before we started so it was a nice way to kind of mix it all together I think that's the great thing too is that you are learning whilst you're having fun like the fun is at the forefront but there's a lot of learning that goes into uh, completing the, the pages as we go and the fact that you're there with so many other people who may be trying it for the first time as well, or who just love the subject matter, or who know fun facts about it, or have just discovered this amazing new watercolor uh, maker that, you know, just recommends and everyone buys out the store in, in an instant. <laughs> it's, um, it's a super fun thing to be a part of. I, I'm not gonna lie, I get really upset when there is no live call each week. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Tanja, we have to give her a break though, because if it was up to us, we'd, just, we'd demand live calls every day. Um, but anyway, here is one of the lessons that Tanji taught the uh, mushrooms. I'm going to check that I'm in frame again, because I do tend to move out of frame on these like chatty videos. There we go. So this is, I did mine on a separate piece of paper. This was my lesson of the bow truckle, little um, smashed bow truckle, or pressed bow truckle, I should say. Um, inspired by uh, Brian Froud's illustrations for 
Lady Coddington's Book of Pressed Fairies. I think that's how you say it. I've got it written down somewhere. Um, I just loved the look of it and we were, I was trying to figure it out and how I could put a Harry Potter spin on it. And so I pressed a little bow truckle. And this was a part of, well, this was the lesson that I taught. There was a few other ones. I was just like really into blow splatter at this point. So I added that to all my mushrooms. I wanted to finish this like by adding a ton of tiny little detail, but I kind of love the way that it is. So I'm just, I, I need to adhere that down to here so that it takes pride of place. Possibly put some journaling over here, but I just love all these wild mushrooms. They kind of look like Avatar, but they're also just, yeah, I mean, totally fun, totally whimsical. I love all the textures. This was just throwing more and more watercolor on top of watercolor. So much fun. Here is Mindy's lesson. I loved this one. This was a, a draw, painting our Patronus. Mine's a red squirrel, which is not as fabulous as I expected in the drawing. <laughs> I thought I would get something much nicer than that. I also thought I was a Slytherin, not a Ravenclaw, so go figure. Uh, but I put a lot of iridescent watercolors on there. I just love how when you shift it all, it becomes a completely different... Um, image like the squirrel kind of uh, goes away and then you can totally see it. I hope that's picking up in the camera. Let me check Oh, yeah, there you go So that was that I love I love that whole thing so Kyush This is another one of the warm-ups and I made these uh, pygmy puffs because I'd done a version of the pygmy puffs already for my lesson so I wanted to make these kind of like edible as if I were going to Zonko's and they were gonna, it was like an ice cream, but it was like a sherbet fluffy thing. So I called these Zonko Fizzing Pygmy Puff Fairy Floss Fluff, <laughs> which I had to write so I'd remember it. Um, but I was also trying all this hatching and black and white with this uh, really loose and expressive watercolor, which is just one of the things that I picked up from Brit's lesson. So, so this is how I think you take the inspiration of some of the things you learn. You kind of dissect apart what it is that you're looking at and what features you might actually like to try again and it was definitely that that kind of juxtaposition of the really loose watercolor like nothing here is lined except for the little faces this isn't lined but this is heavily lined it's very graphic it's very black and white and all of the little hatching detail so um, I, I tried to weave all the lessons together and it's really great too because uh, each teacher kind of has their own thing that they're going to teach you and to be able to mix those together as well You end up with really interesting styles and it's a it's a great way to focus your attention I'm not, Again, I'm not trying to sell this to you But I, <laughs> I think of this for myself when people ask like what what's it worth? Why do you do it? What do you what do you do it for? For me like um, the best way I can learn is by having fun and actually doing it so if I'm if I'm gonna just have the fun like I, I do need to go back and make sure I did learn something otherwise then you're kind of just having fun for fun's sake, which is great, but some people, you know, maybe wouldn't want to register for a class uh, if that were the case. So I look back and I think, well, I learned this skill here, I in this lesson I learned this skill, in this lesson I learned this skill, and it's really honing in on those like particular skills and then playing with them all together. So you don't have to learn how to do everything from the beginning. It's not like, you know, every bone in your body, let's learn how the anatomy works and start drawing figures. It's not at all. Sometimes you start with a shape that Mindy will give you. Um, and with Brit, sometimes, uh, like, I mean, Brits are pretty, pretty illustrative, um, but sometimes there, there's even a step that is, you're required to just figure out as you go. Uh, and people get really stressed about that sometimes, but inevitably every single time when the show and tell happens, I see that people have just figured it out because for the sake of moving through the lesson, like you just, you want to be able to keep up. You want to be able to keep going. And it's just incredible to see how, how much people are actually capable of. Um, and that's what I love about the lessons. It's not, it's not like, let's teach you how to be an artist from the beginning. Uh, it's, you've got a bunch of skills, I'm sure already. You can identify shapes. You can pick up your paintbrush and, and start putting paint down. You know, you're kind of talked through it, um, but you're left up to your own devices as to how you put it all together and what you do with it afterwards. Uh, and there's some just, there's just some really neat stuff. I don't know. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> I learn a lot. I learn a lot all the time. You know, I only focus on certain things as I'm doing uh, certain projects as well. So to get out of my comfort zone, like um, blind contour drawings was something I would never do before art journaling the magic. In fact, the first time Tanji asked me to do one uh, out the front of, um, what was it called? The Haunted Mansion. I re flat out refused. I was like, I'm not doing that. I just, I don't want to fail today. I don't want to feel like a failure. <laughs> and she goes, it's fine. You don't have to, but just give it a go. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. 
cut to me blind contour drawing like everything in the park and like and then I was doing non blind contour drawings and I was telling everyone how amazing it was so yeah I mean I think you're really everything is there for you if you want it and it is what you make of it totally um, but there's a lot of good stuff there and that's what I love about it it's not just um you know it, it, it's not basic and it's not beginner but it is for a beginner does that make sense I don't know <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know if I'm making sense anymore. Here is, sorry, I keep jumping up to see if I'm still in frame. I should have taped a little frame around me. Here is the potion bottles from that very same stamp that I made, the little foam stamp. I've stamped it all over the page. And then I kind of just connected it, <coughs> pardon me, to the top of the page with a brush pen, the Pentel pigment brush pen. That really came in handy through uh, the course. I gave every one of them names and I just did lots of little mixes. This is a part of the Alchemy of Watercolor class that we did, or the little um, exercise that we did. So it was about mixing a lot of all the, the pigments and the puddles of pigments together, which was really great. Um, and to be honest, this didn't look like much until all of this mess happened. So it was a really good excuse just to start going wild with it all and just like throwing paint at it. Um, and then some of the potions, as I was going it, I would do some of the puddles with specific parts of the potion, so it's like I was making it and I spilt it on the page. I don't know. I just like all that. <laughs> I, look, I'm not a big reader, but I did read some of the Harry Potter books, so I'm not a huge Harry Potter nerd, but I do enjoy the fantasy. I do live for a good fantasy, so this, uh, this really does it for me. But this was specifically uh, for the Muggle Art Study course. The three nights, the three hours per night. Um, I did teach it this one. Uh, you can see I started this journal on April 23rd. I didn't work on it, in fact, at all, I don't think, after the course, uh, because I've been doing so much other stuff. I would love to go through it and finish it. Don't know when that's gonna happen, but I've always got it here for when I wanna uh, return, and I'm sure I'll kind of flip between them all as I work through the next parts of the course, because, um, you know, I, it, a lot of the art journaling and magic stuff, you kind of start a journal and it's for that particular experience. It's not a hard and fast rule, in fact a lot of what I'm saying is up for interpretation. <laughs> I think we all kind of art journal and magic a different way, but um, I, I, I like to try and do it as much as Tangi does it, like however Tangi's doing it, I try to take her lead on that because she seems to be having the most fun. <laughs> so I just want to recreate the fun however Tangi is having it. Um, but everything kind of stays in its one thing. Like when you go to a retreat and you have one of the golden books, uh, you you start and finish that in that same retreat. Doesn't mean you can't work on it again. In fact, I always do, uh, but this I haven't gone back to just yet, but I probably will one day just add a few more things in here. Cause um, like I said, it's it's not, I don't want to say it's not for beginners. It definitely is for beginners. If, you're, um, if you've got the excitement, the uh, energy and enthusiasm to try, I think definitely. Um, but a lot of what you will learn in here is stuff that, uh, you know, you wouldn't necessarily teach to a beginner straight away. So a lot of the watercolor stuff is, I think, I think that's a really great way to get you playing with everything. Um, and I think Tanji says it best herself when she says that, like, she can get you to play, which is totally true. And I think it, that is, like, boundaryless. Like, you, it's whether you're a beginner, whether you're someone that's been doing it for 20 years, um, you know, it all takes some, some, sometimes we just need someone to get us out of our own head. And that's what I like about this for me. But yeah, I, I guess I shouldn't talk too much about the experience because it would be personal for everybody. Um, but these are the things that I personally like about it. Some of the stuff I do feel very beginner in when I'm picking it up and I think I don't know what this is. Like the blind contour drawings, like I don't want to do it. I don't know it. I think I'm going to be bad at it. It's going to be bad. Like <laughs> I don't want to do it. And then you end up doing it and you think, wow, how have I ever not done this before? This is definitely something I'm gonna keep doing. So yeah, I'm a big fan. And because I'm a big fan, I can't just have one journal, I gotta have two. So this was one, this one I started before this. This one I was working on before, I'm just gonna check, um, before Muggle Art Studies number two because I wanted to watch all of number one. So while I was watching number one, I was putting a lot of this together. These aren't really lessons from the first course. Um, in fact, I don't think I did any of the lessons from the first course. I printed out all the materials. <laughs> I just didn't do it because I, I didn't even get half the way through this. Uh, but I was just going for this idea that if I were a wizard in the wizarding world and I 
you like picked up my journal, like you, you found this journal, it was in my backpack and I was one of these wizards, what would my journal look like? And so that's why a lot of it's like really fantastical and it's kind of like the art journaling I would do. And in fact, I've reused a lot of old stuff that I've done before to put it all together so that it just feels very me, but also me in this like magical space, which is not a subject matter I use often. Why did I say that? I draw fairies all the time. I guess it is something I use often. <laughs> Not Harry Potter themed though. And this is this has a lot to do with like Harry Potter and magic. So it's a little portrait I did before. I just put a little witch's hat on it, just cut that out. Here's a swatch of the watercolor tin uh, that I was using. Some washi, some old uh, illustrations. Actually, if you did my, um, my Zoom hangout the other day, when we did the Alice in Wonderland lesson, this was the background of the first one that I did. It's just a, a printout version of that. And this was an old um, Inktober drawing that I never used, but it just thought it fit the theme, team with the theme. You can see I've got like a string coming through here. I've been sewing in these journals. I don't know what it is, but it's ever since I've been studying the uh, Muggle art studies, <laughs> and the wizarding stuff, apparently that just means I have to sew in my journals. So this is one of the first pages I did. And like I said, this one has all those uh, flip, like flip out bits and pieces. So there's, there's a lot of hidden moments in all of this. I'm gonna have to stand up to make sure I'm in screen. There you go. Won't be so annoying now. Um, this was the first page that I did and I wanted to give it a bit of a mermaid theme since it was mermaid as I was doing it. Or was it? It wasn't at all, it was April. Oh wow, I must've been getting excited for it. These are last year's mermaid pieces. These are the originals, um, and I, they were just sitting around and doing nothing. So I cut them out and I put them behind this glassine, glassine, I think it's glassine, a uh, little paper. It was actually tracing paper. I made this a see-through envelope, uh, kind of like I was sent this see-through envelope of pressed mermaids. And this is actually where the idea for the pressed creatures came from, which was the lesson I ended up teaching. Uh, and then these were sequins. Pretended that they were the samples of their scales. I haven't done any of my journaling about it, but some of the things are like very, you know, they may not look like they go together, but there's a lot of a reason. Like this little piece of Tim Holtz ephemera has the hip bone, which is obviously something that I would I kind of journal about. My, my annotations, my notes for mermaids. This is an old gouache test piece. Yeah, I have a lot of different stuff that just kind of worked for this, which was really exciting. This was a part of the water printing I was trying to figure out. <laughs> I actually have a washi tape made with this. This It's not arrived yet, but that'll be going up in my store soon. I, I loved it. I loved the way it all looked, so I just decided to make a washi tape out of it. Um, this was an old, an old piece of napkin that I would mop up all my paint when I was working with watercolour. So I just thought it was pretty. I put it in here. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. You can see all these little Tim Holtz wings. So cute, I love those. This is because this is my um, this is my sample of butterfly wings, my little packet of butterfly wings. I know it, it's kind of morbid when you think about it, but I'm just gonna say that I found them all on the floor. <laughs> and she's got her little wings. I only glued one of them down so the other one could kind of fly free and be interactive. She's just a little sketch put on this piece of, uh, piece of ephemera. A lot of this is just ephemera I've had like, I didn't buy anything specific for this. This was a unicorn piece, which, you know, if you're going to put a unicorn anywhere, you might as well put it in your Harry Potter book, right? So <laughs> I put that there. Looks absolutely perfect in this section. And all these gorgeous little bits of paper and, like, washi papers. I, I finally found a home for so many of them, so that was really exciting. Here's more of that water printing. I sewed this together with little gold embroidery thread. There's just little holes. You can see behind, well actually I've kind of taped or pasted over this with collage, but it's a nice texture. But inside is a dried rose that Steve gave me for Valentine's Day, which um, I, I like that there's a personal sentiment to it, even though it's kind of on my uh, Defense Against the Dark Hearts page. <laughs> uh, you know, there you go. Here's some more of that. I don't know what I was going to say about that. I was just like, don't say anything nasty. <laughs> Um, I pasted some old pictures here. This is an old Audrey painting. I just thought it kind of looked a little haunting underneath the collage. A little picture of Oliver. A lot of this stuff is like, I pr this was a double print from when I was doing a YouTube tutorial. This is something I did years ago. Like years ago when I was just loving my long neck ladies for everything. And, uh, and Steve told me, do a, do a Bellatrix Lestrange. Like this has been sitting around for years doing nothing. So I'm glad that there's a home for some of this stuff now. 
And um, this was like a creativation sample for my concept stamping that I always thought was too creepy to put anywhere, but found a perfect home in this spa. <laughs> Just got little washi tape eyes. They're all kind of um, holographic. Anyway, that's my little defense against the dark arts page. Oh, this, this moves. I'm going to show you this now. There you go. It's a time turner. <laughs> I, I don't know what I was thinking. I just love anything interactive. You have to kind of reset it by spinning it a little bit, but I like that when you come to this page, you just move it over. I don't know why I just really liked it. These are envelopes. These are vintage envelopes. Uh, Victory gave these to me as a part of a big, like, vintage ephemera stash uh, that she sent a couple of years ago, I think, now. And um, I slowly make my way through it, but I just love these because they look like the envelopes exploding out of the fireplace. I'm giving you a bit of a, a Fantastic Beasts moment here. This was in another journal. I ripped it out to put it in here. Don't mind that. I also did that with this. <laughs> uh, but this is kind of like her... This might be her Patronus. Who knows? And these are all little black cat stickers, which, you know... Obviously, I was going to have a black cat moment. The thing I like about this is that... Um, like, these two still make sense by themselves. And a lot of what I was thinking about is how does it look when one thing is exposed underneath it? Because there was all these little bits and foldouts and flaps that I didn't want to be able to see too far through to the next section and then think, well, how does that match with that? Or, like, why is this so pretty and pink and then the rest of it looks kind of wild and crazy? So you'll see that um, there kind of is a bit of a flow to it. It's not perfect, but you can't see a lot of what's behind it and that's on purpose because I want to make sure that they're separated enough and that you're only seeing what I want you to see in any given spread. Like I said, some of them work, some of them really don't. <laughs> but in the when I was putting this together, this actually didn't work very well um, only because when I put all these cats here, it looked like there was nothing over here. So I put the cat here and then I thought, oh no, now that it looks like there's nothing here. So I put one here, but then they just look like these out of nowhere. So I put a little butterfly. Does that, why did I explain all of that? That sounds so crazy. But if you've stayed for 30 minutes to watch this, you're probably the brand of crazy that might have wanted to hear that. <laughs> all that to say, I kind of look through the page, see what's under there and see if I can make it a little more interesting like this. This is a mess, but we'll figure that out eventually. Here's a little witch drawing. So glad that there, I didn't realize I had a lot of ephemera that would fit, but I'm so glad there was a lot of it because you know what I feel like. It's not hoarding if it ends up in a journal. So all of this stuff is not hoarded anymore. <laughs> Even this, like this was an old, uh, what's that called? Collage and illustration tutorial piece. That was from years ago. Here is uh, part of my lesson. These are the pressed creatures. So I have this kind of makeshift belt. This is all made out of paper. These are little, uh, tiny little pressed creatures that I have little samples of. And they each have little stories about where I found them and what I think of them. Um, all completely made up. And I think that was also another fun part of going through this experience is that I was kind of... I felt like I was a little kid again, just remembering the first time I went through Harry Potter and just imagining all of these places and fantasizing about what it would be like to, you know go to the to Zonko's and like get some candy or like what a chocolate frog really looked like as it was bouncing around. So to go through all of those and kind of give these little backstories, I kind of felt like I was searching back into my child, <laughs> my childhood imagination and just remembering the excitement. Like the first time I saw the cart roll by on the Hogwarts Express with all the lollies on it, but my, it's all food centric with me, of course. <laughs> Um, I just, I wanted to eat all of it. I wanted to see it all. I wanted to play with it all. It looked crazy. It was like running around all the little, um, things flying everywhere. It just feels fun to revisit that as an adult. It's not often that you get permission to do that and to be with a bunch of people that are so ready to get on board with that, that play, that kind of fantasy. I guess this is, um, this is our version of, what is it? Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> It, it's not really that fantasy role play, but you know what I mean? You're, you're really using your imagination and um, that's, I'm excited because this is, this is the last bit here. Uh, the, where it's moving on to the Wizarding Artist Society, I'll just grab that out here. These are those journals. So those, those were Muggle Art Study, but then now it's uh, rebranded and changed to Wizarding Artist Society. That's kind of where I think it's moving into. I can't be 100% certain, so don't quote me on this. With everything, please ask Tanji. Like, if I've said anything that has been wrong, it's it's wrong. And I will totally own up to that. 
<laughs> I've been uh, speaking from my own personal experience with the whole thing, but I don't want to give you any kind of false ideas about what, what it is. So please just disregard absolutely everything I've said thus far and, uh, and do your own research. You can go and, uh, especially looking through Instagram, social media is a really great place to kind of gauge what happens because there'll be a lot of posting with the hashtags. So I always recommend people go and search a hashtag because it'll give you a good idea of what's kind of happening in that space. Um, but yeah, I think we're moving more in towards this Wizarding Artist Society, which is kind of like monthly, uh, like a monthly meetup. But there are just, the stories with it and we're kind of moving into like how... Like all these magical ideas and stuff, but through art journaling and, um, yeah, I, I can't really, I can't say too much. <laughs> I can't say too much, but I can show you this journal that has literally, it's in no stage of complete. I've done a few things to them, but I'm really excited. You can see there are file folders, uh, with these little journal inserts inside. Mine aren't attached because I kind of want to, um... I want to work in them separately from the folder and kind of put them in afterwards. I'm not sure if I want to do that. I might end up attaching it. Sorry, I'm just checking again that I'm in frame. I'll just stand up again. Look at me trying to be lazy and catch a seat halfway through. <laughs> um, I'm going to try and work on these separately. I've made these inserts, so I bought the folders. Uh, these are the ones recommended to buy. I printed out all of the ephemera and the stickers and the labels and everything. Um, this was from the first course. I just have photo references to be able to sketch certain places. Um, I even have like this, this was the piece that I taught the lesson on in the, in the actual class. I had to do a lot bigger so that people could see, but I'll keep that in there for now because I might just transfer some of that stuff into this journal. Um, but I think I might work on these separately of that. The first journal I made, well these are all tests, but I thought it looked really good sewn on as a pocket nice. I like that. I'm gonna use this. These are just printables from the course. I'm a Ravenclaw, so I printed out my Ravenclaw. Um, and I'm trying to do that thing again where I can see through it. So I've even actually marked off some of these sections just to know what is visible from the front page. Look, it doesn't really matter and I don't even know if I'm gonna stick with it. <laughs> but I've started with the intention, so we'll see if, we'll see if I keep going. Uh, but I love the printables. I have to print out the collage sheets, actually. Um, but yeah, these are the journals I made. These were actually made from all little uh, paper scraps that I had from binding other journals. And this is another one. I did this today, so it's kind of... I don't know. It looks, it looks like it needs work. <laughs> Let's just say that. This is blank. Uh, and I think I have to trim that down a little bit. And this is my last one. Uh, and I deckled these edges because I'm going to paint them with the gold, the rose gold and the copper again and make a really nice deckled edge feature out of that one. I don't know if I'm going to theme each one or if each one is for something different or if I just don't want to wait for paint to dry in this one I'll just grab a different insert. That's why I'm thinking I might just, I might only bind them in here once they're finished. But like this, this is fully in use. I mean these, these are my references, this is my pocket so I do kind of need this around to be able to use it. Um, and I just think it'll be easier to use this off to the side with my reference whilst this book is free. But then again, do I want to use this book? I don't know, those are decisions for me to make at another time. But the first monthly meeting is this week, so I should make a decision quickly. Anyway, that is five of my journals, two that I think only were worth flipping. <laughs> um, I would have to do a no voiceover version of this, well a no talking version of this just in case because I think I've been ranting for what, 40 minutes? Yeah, 40 minutes and I've said nothing. I hope you enjoyed this nonetheless. I'm really excited to move into the Wizarding Artist Society or WAS for short and just experience whatever that is and kind of get lost with the fantasy and carried away with that. I'm ex so excited to see you there as well. I know a lot of people have joined and I'm super excited. We've been chatting about it and um, I've been watching people put their journals together. So if you are a part of it and you want to just like pop a comment down below, I don't know, pop the uh, pop a heart with your house color. Does that make sense or is that too difficult? <laughs> or just say, just say below like me, I'm a part of it. Um, that'll give everyone a good indication of, uh, of who's joining and who's going to be there. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to share that space with you and just learn alongside you. It's just super fun and it's a great way for us to be able to kind of enjoy the learning process and 
enjoy each other's company and, and be in community together whilst we uh, might not be in each other's physical presence. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of good things for me and um, really important things. And I just, I'm excited to, to start because at the moment we've all been excited with the printables and I know we're just kind of uh, chomping at the bit just to get into that monthly meeting. So we'll do that and I'll see everyone there. And um, I'll try not to <laughs> try not to go overboard and only commit myself to this. This is the thing, like this has nothing to do with JLB Creative other than the time that I pop in and teach as a guest sometimes. But uh, this is really, this has nothing to do with me. This is all art drilling the magic. These are my passion projects. I think you can see that I get very passionate about them and uh, I want to devote all the time and energy and attention in the world to them. Um, but also just know that because as someone that does have my own brand, uh, this is why I don't, I don't necessarily share this all the time or share it in depth or teach anything from any of this because this is not, this is not a part of JLB Creative. Um, this is art journaling the magic, but I do want to share with you uh, that I love it and I want to share with you a bit of what it's about just in case you want to love it alongside me. <laughs> <laughs> did that sound cheesy enough to end on? I think it did. I think it absolutely did. I'm going to film the flip only version of this and I'll see you again really soon. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye.